Hi, this is Dominique Finney and I'm at the Sydney Seminar Series for the National Herbalist Association of Australia. It's November 2011 and I have with me Anita Chakraborty who is amazing. She's a naturopath, she's a herbalist, she has a Masters in Analytical Chemistry. She used to work in the pharmaceutical industry but now she's really dedicated to herbal medicine. Hello Anita. Hi Dominique, it's lovely to be here. Oh, how are you finding the seminar series? Oh, it's really interesting. I loved Rob's speech at the beginning, talking about childhood resilience and behavioural problems with children based on, you know, things like bullying and just the environment they grow up. So mm. quite a lot of sociology, not just about herbs. So Excellent. that's a good mix in the seminar today, I think. Now, what brought you across to the white light side of herbal medicine from chemistry in pharmaceuticals? <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about that? Sure. Well, um... Back in the UK, I did a master's in chemistry, and then I worked for AstraZeneca, don't shoot me, um, pharmaceutical <laughs> giant. And when I worked for them, I was doing research for um, a high blood pressure tablet that was in formulation and development. And I was working on an anti-cancer drug as well. Mm -hmm. And that was Zolodex, which is specific to prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for AstraZeneca for about 12 months, and funnily enough, it was the side effects with all these drugs that made me think perhaps pharmaceuticals is not where I want to be if I want to work in the healing industry. Great, so um, do you look at evidence-based herbal medicines or traditional herbal medicines? What, how do you choose, um, as a chemist, herbal medicines to use in your practice? Um, I choose based on uh, the literature that I find with evidence-based medicine, mm -hmm. but I also do like the um, indigenous people and, and their traditional bases. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm quite keen on Native American culture and Aboriginal culture, so I like to, to, mer to marry the two. Great, and are there yeah. some specific herbs in there that you really, really love? Um, one of my favourite herbs is rhodiola. Mm -hmm. um, Which I is the Arctic rose, it's its common name. Yeah, 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 it? exactly. Yeah. So what I love about that, the historical aspect of rhodiola, it was used by the um, the Russians and the Siberians specifically to, for endurance, to help them go through the harsh Siberian winter. Mm. Um, and um, I also have this vision of the, the Vikings with their long boats and, and the horned helmets <laughs> uh, going to rape and pillage, because um, I use it as a, as a fertility herb as well in my right. practice. But what I love about rhodiola, most of the women that come to see me, they're in their 30s, they've got high powered jobs, they're very stressed and they want to conceive. And rhodiola works in many ways. So it it does calm the nerves, it calms the nervous system down. It's also a brain tonic, so it can help with mm. memory and cognition. Because when you're very stressed, sometimes you can lose focus. Mm. Um, and I also do believe it does have a fertility action, because I just keep seeing in my mind's eye the... Uh, the horned Vikings <laughs> going off to do their thing. Great, in so you think Europe. it helps some um, sperm production? I, I don't know if there's actual <laughs> evidence about it, but I feel that if the Vikings were spreading their uh, semen all around <laughs> Northern Europe, it must have had some benefit somewhere. Okay, that's um, really interesting. You mentioned American Indian uh, medicine as well. What's your favourite herb in there? Um, well, Rob actually mentioned it today, echinacea, and that's something that yeah. I use quite a lot do in my practice as well. Do you see a gastrofolia or the papuria? Um, I like to use a blend of yeah. the two, actually. Um, I like to use the roots and the aerial parts. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, similar to what Rob said, um, I know that it does have a, an immune basis and a lymphatic um, benefit, but I also like the, f the fact that it does help with, with fatigue, which I, I see mm. in a lot of my you know, women that want to conceive. You know, okay. high-powered, tired, and... Um, yeah, they just need a little bit of a boost, really. Right, so you're in Sydney. Whereabouts are you? Uh, I'm based in Coogee, Coogee so by the sea, yeah. and that's got yeah. a very strong Aboriginal connection, actually. Yeah. Coogee means uh, stinky seaweed, so oh, okay. um, I, yeah, I love living in Coogee by the sea, so even when there's stinky seaweed there. Everyone's got a great metabolism in um, Coogee <laughs> with no toxins in their body because of the benefits of seaweed. Exactly, you just swim in the sea, <laughs> get really slim, come to Coogee. Yeah, um, you mention <laughs> fertility quite often just in our, so far in this conversation. Could you yeah. tell me about your work with fertility? Yeah, um, the demographic that I'm looking at, I've mentioned before, are women in their 30s, mm -hmm. although one of my clients was 42 and she successfully conceived with her husband. Um, 
So yeah, um, I do also work with women and their female reproductive issues. Mm -hmm. So, you know, single women that are not trying to conceive, but they've got heavy, painful periods, having time off work with their periods. Also women with PCOS that Mm. that don't have a period, which is equally as stressful. Uh, And also women that have just got an irregular menstrual cycle. Right, so what would be your favourite woman's herb for the reproductive system? Oh, look, there's... Many different herbs that I would use in my mix. Mm -hmm. Um, I know it's an endangered species, but I find for women with a heaviness in the uterus um, and low uterine tone, I do like false unicorn root, Mm -hmm. although it's horribly expensive and I know it's endangered and I Mm -hmm. only use it rarely, but it just works amazingly Mm -hmm. for for these women with this heavy pelvic area and and very painful periods. Um, I also like to use, um, I'm a medieval astrologer. Wow. Um, I've been to international conferences Mm -hmm. on astrology and I'm a member of the um, Australian Federation um, of Astrologers. Um, And I like to use the lunar phases as well with regards to fertility for women and men because men's um, sperm count shifts with the lunar cycle as well Mm because sperm is fluid and the moon rules fluids. But I understand with astrology and herbs that you can look at your chart for the upcoming year and see where there may be weaknesses with your body. Oh, definitely, yeah. So you could use herbs as a preventative medicine astrologically. Do you often work with that? Uh, I I, I work when there are people that are open to it. Mm -hmm. Um, I do try and keep my astrology and my um, herbal medicine approach a little bit separate in the first few consults because there's some people that are not comfortable with with astrology Mm -hmm. but once I know my client is very open to it then yeah in in terms of predictive techniques I like to look at the next 12 to 18 months and see what's happening uh, physically with the person. Uh, The sixth house is the house of health Mm -hmm. uh, and the moon specifically rules the physical body so Mm -hmm. looking at the zodiac signs that the moon is in and, and any planets or aspects to the sixth house I find that a very powerful tool to help with health. Excellent. How long have you been a member of the National Herbalist Association? For? Uh, about four years now. Yeah. yeah. And how are you finding it? Oh, I love it. And um, I was there just a few weeks ago when they had their big, um, big seminar promotional. But unfortunately, the weather was awful. <laughs> it was that day when it was like monsoon day. So, yeah, National um, Herbal Medicine Week. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I spoke at National Herbal Medicine Week as well. And my subject was um, just using supermarket um, herbs for health. Great. And I spoke a little bit about Nicholas Culpepper, who's my absolute hero. Okay, what is the best supermarket herb to use for health? Okay, say for example, in a busy lifestyle, you just run down, you want something, you've got low energy, what would you recommend people do if they go into a health food shop, pharmacy, or um, off the shelf? medicine um look for for a pick-me-up i would get licorice tea you can Mm -hmm. get it in some supermarkets now but all herbal medicine uh, sorry all um shops health food shops will sell it as well licorice is an adaptogen Mm. so it does help with resilience and endurance and it's also good for you know balancing hormones Mm -hmm. Uh, and I find a lot of people that are tired they have this kind of craving for sugar in the afternoon and because licorice can balance blood sugar I think if you just want one herb and that's all that you can buy I would get that. So that's fantastic Anita and we're going to be drinking licorice tea at work I would think that's a great idea. (laughs) All day. (laughs) And um, what's your website? Uh, My website is anitanaturallifestyle.com.au. Lovely. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Dominique. It's great talking to you.